There's a chance that this could be one of the biggest drivers of cardiovascular disease. Now, full disclaimer, I am not a cardiologist. I don't even consider myself a cardiovascular disease expert in the slightest. I much more of just a metabolic health connoisseur, if you want to call it that. But I cannot deny some of this really wild data that I've been seeing come out surrounding fast food and understanding what is in fast food, you know, for so long. Just like with insulin resistance and high blood sugar, we've pointed the finger at sugar, we've pointed the finger at saturated fats, we've pointed the finger at even cholesterols. But we have this one thing that we've only begun to understand over the last like maybe 10 years or so, and that's trans fats. And before you turn off this video thinking, okay, I know what the answer is, I think you need to arm yourself with the understanding of what it's doing in your body so that you can make the steps, take the proper steps rather, to reduce your intake and also change some of the damage that it may have done. So let's dive in. After today's video, a big thank you to Seed Daily Symbiotic. I put that link down below. That is a 25% off discount link for their Symbiotic. So it is a prebiotic and a probiotic in one capsule. So that means that you're getting a multi-stage delivery. So there's a capsule inside of a capsule. So probiotics are interesting, but Seed takes it to another dimension with this. There's a lot of evidence on probiotics, but most of them are denatured and broken down by the time they get into our hostile gut biome anyway. So if you're looking to improve your gut health, if you're looking to make some changes to your diet and you're just overall trying to change your, well, microbiome, then you want to check them out. And that is an exclusive 25% off discount link. And that is specifically for people that watch my channel. So that's in the top line of the description underneath this video. And a big thank you to them for the continued support on this channel over the years. New England Journal of Medicine, three diets with equal macronutrient composition, three diets with equal calories, three diets where the only difference was the kind of fats that were in that diet. They had monounsaturated fats like oleic acid, they had saturated fat, and then they had trans fatty acid polymers, trans polymers. 10% of the calories coming from these, okay? Now, in the olden days, we'd look at this and we'd be like, okay, it's the saturated fat that's gonna be the problem. So what this was was a three-week study, just three weeks, okay? And what they found was that the trans fats ended up decreasing HDL cholesterol by 12% and increasing LDL cholesterol by 13.9%. Now, let me get something very, very straight here. When it comes down to the LDL discussion, this ends up getting a lot of people fired up. And I understand because it's confusing, it's hard to really comprehend entirely what's going on, and without looking at a fractionated panel and understanding the particle density, particle size, VLDL, et cetera, light fluffy LDL, whatever, we cannot, I can't make a statement there, I can't make a comment there. But what I can do is address some other things. Okay, reductions in HDL are definitely not good, but a rapid change in a lipid profile that is this fast, only in a group that is consuming trans fats, it's pretty clear what's happening here. So to understand more, I point to a study that was published in the journal Cardiology. Now, unfortunately, it's a rodent model study, and I'll explain why, but it still tells us a lot of what could be going on and allows us to learn more. So the reason this is a rodent model study is because they had to knock out or get rid of what is called an LDL receptor. So if you were to consume uh, you know, saturated fat, for instance, or you, were to, you have LDL receptors and these take up LDL and it, it basically if you don't have them, you're allowed to see precisely what the diet and only the diet is doing to the metabolism. That's what's really cool about this study. So they had one group eat a diet that was about half a percent of their calories from dietary cholesterol. Then they had another group do the half a percent dietary cholesterol plus 5% trans fats. Then they had another group do half a percent dietary cholesterol plus oleic acid, a monounsaturated fat. After eight weeks, they monitored their aorta and they saw that their atherosclerotic lesions mildly in all the groups, but the only group that had huge masses forming, huge atherosclerotic lesions and atherosclerotic plaque was the trans fat group. So that means in a world where we have everything equal except for fats, the trans fats are causing more plaque, more atherosclerotic buildup in the aorta. So it doesn't matter where you stand as far as HDL and LDL, we can all agree that we don't want arterial plaque, right? 
Now, there are lots of bodies of evidence that suggest that oxidized LDL, inflammation, just overall oxidative stress in general could be a huge, huge factor, if not the factor here. So with that, we find some other data from this study. They found there was a 68% increase in LDL above control. It's a pretty, pretty robust increase. And it probably just has to do with the fact that trans fats can't really be broken down properly. They take a long, long, long time, like over 50 days to start breaking down those specific bonds. But what they saw was that there was a tremendous increase in superoxide dismutase in the vessels, okay, specifically in the area where there was plaque. So what does this mean? Well, superoxide dismutase is an endogenous antioxidant and it fights off oxidative stress. You're only going to see an increase in endogenous production of superoxide dismutase if, if there is oxidative stress. The plus side of this study being so controlled is that there were no other stressors. Like these mice weren't upset about their TPS reports. These mice didn't have a fight with their girlfriend last night. They were just all equal. So since they saw an increase in the superoxide dismutase, it means that there was a level of oxidative stress in their body induced by the trans fats. So why this is so, so, so important is because even people that do not agree with the entire lipid hypothesis there, we all do tend to agree that oxidative stress and inflammation is problematic. And trans fats check all those boxes. So no matter where you stand, vegan, keto, carnivore, whatever, trans fats, no good, no bueno. What can we do to kind of reduce this? Well, first of all, reduce the trans fats. What does this look like? Well, reduce the things that have hydrogenated oil in them. They should not belong in your diet whatsoever. Fast food, fast food burgers, fast food cheeses, fast food french fries. There are a number of places that still literally fry their fries in hydrogenated oil. You're not even having a meat which has naturally occurring trans fats, which are a completely different ball game. You're talking french fries fried in straight trans fats. Now, one of the bigger issues that we face metabolically is that trans fats do tend to lead to fatty liver disease, which impacts our ability to manufacture insulin properly, which affects our blood sugar, which affects our inflammation more, which affects oxidative stress, which affects what are called advanced glycation end products, AGEs. All of this can lead to cardiovascular risk as well. Diabetes is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. A lot of these things, inflammation is a risk factor, not official risk factor. So how do you reduce that? Well, reducing trans fats for one, occasionally putting yourself into aggressive deficits. I recommend things like intermittent fasting because it worked for me by putting myself in that aggressive deficit, but even putting yourself into some degree of a deficit a couple days per week that is aggressive enough to start tapping into the visceral fat, tapping into the fatty liver. Now there's a lot of bodies of evidence too that suggest that reducing our overall sugar intake would help us a lot with that, and I agree. I also feel like reducing excess fructose and high fructose corn syrup could be beneficial. But at the end of the day, if you're not at some level of homeostasis, as far as thermodynamics are concerned, like you're still in a surplus, if you are still in an excessive surplus, I don't know if heavily reducing saturated fat or heavily reducing fructose is going to make a huge, huge dent. However, I do think that once you are in a deficit, pulling those individual levers might be stronger. I.e., if you are already in a slight deficit and then reduce sugar, then the lever that you pull on the fatty liver, then the lever that you pull on visceral fat is arguably much stronger. However, there is some data suggesting that lower carb diets, even at energy balance, can be very effective for reducing fatty liver and visceral fat. I think a lot of that comes to be with the fact that the subjects they're looking at are already metabolically dysfunctional. They're not necessarily healthy metabolic people. So if they're already having metabolic dysfunction, then simply reducing the fuel that the body has an inability to use i.e. sugar, it's not the sugar that's inherently the issue there, it's the body's inability to use it. So then, and only then, do you really see aggressive changes by just reducing sugar, because you're reducing a fuel that the body can't use. So the body says, thank you, I can start tapping into other things now, rather than having high circulating glucose. So in simple human terms, if you know that you have metabolic syndrome, or a metabolic dysfunctional, or a diabetic, then yes, reducing saturated fat, 
and reducing sugar and reducing fructose can be effective. If you are a regular healthy person, but you go to fast food, yes, that can actually exist, what do you do? Reduce the hydrogenated fats, take breaks from food, try to exercise in a deficit as much as you can, meaning fasted or when you haven't eaten much food, and those kind of things can check a lot of those boxes. As always, I'll see you tomorrow.